Hey, what's up guys? In today's video, we are talking about print on demand design and specifically focusing on some common pitfalls to avoid when using the app Kittle, okay? Not all designs are created equal. And one thing I love about Kittle, they actually make it really easy to make some super high quality designs like the one you see in this thumbnail. But there's also a couple things we need to make sure, uh, let's call them best practices that we adhere to and equally, I guess for every best practice, there's the inverse of that. And there's things that um, are easy to get wrong that I'm just going to remind you really quickly in this video of um, using Kittle and hope that that results in all of us creating better print on demand designs. So let's get right to it. Real quick reminder, check out the description. I've got a link to where you can sign up for Kittle for free. I've also got a link to my eight day print on demand mini course that's completely free, help you get started with your print on demand business. And I've got a great print on demand Facebook group that I hope you'll check out. All right, let's jump on over to Kittle. All right, Kittle users and people who aren't Kittle users, by the way, again, the link in the description will sign you up for free. Uh, so I recommend using it. If you just go to Kittle and log in and you scroll, one thing you'll notice is that there are a bunch of professional quality design templates pre-built that you can click. Like for instance, if I want to do something looking, um, what do we call this? Like kind of ornate, right? Like I'd say it's a pretty ornate template. I can just click use this design and then instantly I can go and I can customize it, right? Very easy to do. Um, Victoria Inc. Well, what if I want to change that to Ryan Inc.? right? I have complete control over how it looks, what it says, etc. Um, so the first thing I wanted to mention is that if you're not a good designer or you're lacking ideas or lacking creative uh, inspiration, go to the homepage and just scroll, all right? They even have uh, them sectioned off by product type. So I love designing t-shirts, for instance. I can just click t-shirts there at the top and I'm only going to see um, templates optimized for t-shirts. For instance, look at this a uh, Christmas sweater template that you can pretty easily go swap in and out different graphics and make great um, Christmas uh, sweater template or designs, right? So that's just one quick, I just wanted to start there, but that's not going to get you perfect designs every single time right away. Uh, you guys that watch my Redbubble shop reviews and Etsy shop reviews, uh, I don't just talk about Redbubble and Etsy. I also talk about design. I always like to critique designs because I think over time, if we can get better and better and better and obviously keep you know, improving our process, keep studying what's popular because also it's like chasing a moving target, um, we're gonna you know, be better off in the long run with our business. Uh, one thing that I see commonly, okay, and I queued up this template ahead of time because I wanted to tell you guys what to avoid in this case is, and this is a simple concept here, all right? I didn't mean to grab that over this top layer. I meant to grab kind of this, all right, never mind. What I really wanna illustrate here is just this this element right here you see how it is sitting in the middle of the canvas right the hard craft the you know dark object behind the uh, foreground with the text etc it is sitting vertically in the middle of the canvas now while that may make sense right now while we're designing in kittle if we throw this on a t-shirt in redbubble it's going to be sitting in the middle of the shirt. And this is one of like my pet peeves when I'm doing Redbubble shop reviews every single week. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna find it at least once. And I do every time. I always say vertically orient, your vertical orientation, you wanna vertically orient your graphics towards the top of the canvas if it's a t-shirt, right? So optimize your graphics for the product you're selling them on. If it's a t-shirt, don't leave objects floating in the middle of the page push them up. Okay. And one thing you could do honestly is like you could either, um, like move everything in Kittle, right. And you can multi-select different layers by holding control and clicking other things. Um, for instance, like you might have to just, I didn't plan on actually doing it in this video, but I'm just giving you guys a quick idea of how you could go about doing this. Um, you know, you'd obviously want to spend a little bit more time to make sure it all lines up properly than what I just did. But you see now vertically oriented towards the top, this is how you achieve success as a print on demand seller by putting in the extra 10 seconds of work. Um, also when you download, I mean, you could have also just not moved it in Kittle and just remove the background when you downloaded, download as PNG, and then go, um, just move it up in a different application if you wanted to. Uh, but obviously moving it in Kittle was, took 10 seconds. Um, the next thing that I wanted to mention is that 
your color palette matters. I always design with a specific product color in mind, right? Because we know you, if you subscribe to my channel, you know the importance of getting clicked in search results. It's not easy, right? Because you may have like an incredible design, an incredible product, but you may be sitting next to 10 other sellers who have just as good a design and just as good a product. Ultimately, the customer is going to make a decision, right? And you may have done nothing wrong and you may still not get that sale. It is what it is, right? That being said, I think you can increase the likelihood of getting clicked. And remember, a click leads to an add to cart, leads to a checkout, leads to a conversion, leads to a sale, leads to you getting money in your bank account, right? How do we optimize for that first step, the click? Making that thumbnail as good as possible, making that product as good as possible. I design with a product color in mind. So in this case, in this template, this is, I think, safe to say, if not exactly a monochrome template, it's close to being a monochrome monochrome template. It's like you have one um, color and then different hues of that color, in this case, red. If you're going to go this route, um, you know, I don't know. This, I personally, like, I, I don't like going this route. I like to typically let my foreground design color contrast uh, be, like, optimized to pop. You know, it's called complementary colors. You can look it up um, in Google and whatnot. Complementary colors are colors that when next to each other, uh, tend to like highlight the, or like emphasize, um, the other color. Okay. So in this case, I would not be a fan of like a monochrome color. Like if I'm going to sell this design, I'd probably be looking to sell it maybe on like a white t-shirt and you see what I did there. I just clicked into the background in Kittle, click into the background color and you can do like a color slider here too and get a feel for what t-shirt this is going to look good against. So for instance, I think the black looks terrible. I don't think that looks good at all, but the white for a white t-shirt, this may look amazing. So what I wanted to share about this one is, uh, if you're selling like a red design on a red shirt, it's not that it doesn't look good. It's just that, is it as good as it could possibly be when we're considering the fact that like we need to stand out in search results. And one way of doing that is using good color contrast. Like I think, it, you know, if we optimize for complementary colors, foreground versus background, uh, we're going to be in better shape. Okay. So in Kittle, again, you can easily, by the way, you can also adjust the color of the objects themselves. Keep that in mind. I mean, Kittle is super cool how they did this. Like you can make this guy blue if you want. Uh, so don't forget, like you don't necessarily have to change the color of the product. You can change the color of the design as well. Even these, pre these pre-made design elements. Uh, this one, I just wanted to mention that like the font selection matters okay now if you want some kind of what do we call this like rustic ornate um high society type font like is that is that a good description of this font look at all the squiggles in it right um then this is probably a good font that being said guys even if it fits the niche that you're in the look the feel if it fits that's great but they also have to be able to read the font and most customers don't slow down their day and spend 10 seconds looking and squinting at your thumbnail when you're in search results to figure out what your script font with all the squiggles actually says. A lot of people will just scroll right past it because your competitor, you know, to the left, to the right, down below, all the competitors in search results, they'll probably have a nice, you know, font that checks every box like I just described it except it might be a little bit easier to read so always keep that in mind you know what I mean and again with Kittle you can click in and you can just there's so many fonts you can keep scrolling until you find one uh that is better so for instance I just switched it to Alex Brush so I switched it from Merosa to a font called Alex Brush I'm not saying you need to do this but I do think that the Alex Brush font uh and I didn't plan this so Fortunately, they had a nice, easy to read font um, right there. Okay. I've actually, I've used Alex brush font before too. Whoops. Um, but you see what I'm saying? Like a quick conversion that I don't think takes that much away from the design itself. And it, I mean, is, is, is it still easy to read? No, it's not easy to read. But when you use a script font like this, it is what it is. Like they're, they're just not, they're not as easy to read as like a simple, straightforward, all caps, bold um, font selection. So Keep that in mind, but please make sure people can read your font. In this one, I just wanted to um, kind of reiterate that if you are a beginner to design, uh, again, using templates is a great option to start with. Also, symmetry, keeping things simple, 
there's nothing wrong with that okay so there's some asymmetry in this design template there's also some overlapping design elements i mean unless you have been doing it for a while i would just recommend staying away from overlapping design elements and also just again like stick to symmetry um not that you can't make a good design that is asymmetrical but like for instance like the santa head here I, I, you know maybe make it a little bit smaller and you know move it a little bit away further away from the arced you know clothing co text so it's a little bit easier to read but again then santa's still um hovering over you know the text right there so it, it just gets complicated and real easy to mess up i think um like when i see when i'm doing these reviews and i see asymmetry in designs i just think more times than not it's it's not executed in a way that is better than the alternative which is just centering the text and keeping it simple um, but that, I'm, I'm not saying you shouldn't challenge yourself, but I'm just saying that, you know, as a beginner, you don't need to get too crazy with your approach to design. Generally speaking, um, if I just delete all these extra elements or even I keep the little star, why not keep the star? All right. Um, so I can select these and just big, bold, easy to read text centered. Uh, nothing crazy going on here. Like, I think that looks, you know, just as good, right? I mean, it doesn't have Santa on it and, you know, got to have Santa on the Christmas designs, but uh that being said you know i think the point is just be careful if you go for the asymmetrical designs all right last but not least um this is just a straight up again kittle template that you can use you can customize um once you launch the app just go to the home page they're all right there uh don't forget when you export okay when you ready to, when you're ready to download up here in the top right corner the arrow down button when you click that uh there is a remove background option okay now just because it's checked doesn't mean it's going to strip the entire background because there is actually a background layer, but then also a lot of these templates have like a grunge pattern effect. And so for instance, if all you did was check remove background, this is what you're going to get. You're, you still have the like cracked ground, um, grunge distressed kind of pattern overlaid on top of it. So that's not what we need for a t-shirt. That's going to print and not look great. You know what I mean? Cause it's just going to be in the print area and the rest of the shirt's going to look, um, normal. So what I would recommend doing is click into that um, texture, right? And it's it's the top layer in this case. Uh, and generally it will be because it's, it's intended, I think, to, to be used in the way that I'm going to show you. Um, right here, when I clicked in, it says clip content, okay? If you check the clip content box, what it's then going to do is basically apply that grunge texture to the design itself. Then you can go back up here to download. You can keep remove background checked. And when you download it, it's going to look like this, but it basically did a clipping mask, you know, if in Photoshop, that's what it would be called, uh, to the design in the foreground, but did not apply outside of that foreground design. Um, so that is something that I would recommend not forgetting to do. Otherwise, it's going to look super weird. Um, just did a Redbubble shop review today where literally like yeah, the background elements like the in, in some of the designs, like you could literally see where the print area stopped because they didn't strip out the background. So I know it's kind of an obvious one, guys, um, but don't forget to do that because it can make a world of difference. It can go from a design that sells to a design with a 0% probability of selling because it looks ridiculous. Um, that's pretty much what I wanted to cover today in this video. So I hope you guys found it useful. Again, the link to Kittle is right there in the description. You can get started for free. So I hope you guys check that out. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys at the next one.